It's one of my favourite recipes I've ever done. Cake is good. Cake is life. Hello everybody, it's Barry here. Hope you, you, you right there are well. Welcome to our kitchen, wherever you are in the world. Today we are doing another cookbook corner video, which you guys seem to be loving uh, this series. So thank you so much. The series in which I basically get some cookbooks uh, and then try out a recipe. I generally like sort of more uh, quirky ones or things you wouldn't heard of. So we've done like the Bob's Burgers one. Uh, we did the Ninja Turtle one recently. We've done the Coda cookbook. And today, um, I'm not gonna go too much into it, but uh, the one I was intending to do, we're gonna delay because it has a lot of swear words in it. <laughs> I need a bit of thought on that. So Mrs. B came up with this idea. This is my cookbook. This is my second cookbook. Uh, both I am extremely proud of. And in fact, I have actually written a third and three and a half books actually. I've got three and four available. There'll be some news on that uh, soon. And Mrs. B was like, hey, well, why don't you do a recipe from your own book? That's kind of like surreal. And to be honest, I'm terrible at promoting things. And I've, I never really talk about my book. So like, yeah, I have, I'm really proud of them. Some of my best recipes and I've never really visited them because I was like, well, hopefully someone will get the book and be like, yeah, that's really cool. There were so many that I wanted to uh, show you guys, but this is a recipe that I really like today. It's a cake. I think you're gonna like it too. But first, let me show you something. This was just at the stage where I stopped having highlights in my hair. It, it, it was a stage, we've all been through it. I did have electric blue hair once when I worked in a bank. This is a while ago, look at Phoebe there, okay? It's, it, it, life is going by fast, folks, but we have got some absolutely amazing recipes and photography in here. We are doing a lime and passion fruit drizzle cake. Think of lemon drizzle cake, but just turned up a notch with a sweet tang of the passion fruit, the zing of the lime, and the comforting, stubborn, block, slab of cake. It's one of my favorite recipes I've ever done. This is a true story. One of my favorite photos from my book um, is dumbbell truffles. We got this action man figure to hold it. At our wedding, we had uh, three desserts served. One was the chocolate truffles. The other was a slice of banoffee coffee bread. And the third was this fully encased cheesecake. Just teeny weeny portions of those free desserts were served at my wedding. The chef on the day was like, oh right, okay, yeah, normally we just have like one dessert. I was like, yeah, can you do three? And also the main was this. We had these beef and ricotta stuffed pasta shells. And I remember the chef, he was absolutely going frantic because it needs this conchiglione, I can't pronounce it, but basically large shell pasta and he couldn't find it anywhere and was freaking out, but he saved the day and did it and it was, Awesome to have that replicated on our wedding day. So this book for me, this is why I've picked the recipe from that one. It does trigger the memories, but my second one, I feel like the recipes in that one are just slightly more creative. But anyhow, enough of that. This is what we are gonna make today, okay? So it's a lime and passion fruit drizzle cake. Look at that thing. And the great thing about it, right, it's actually only six ingredients with an optional dusting of icing sugar. And the hardest thing, right, for me, out of any baking, making a cake, particularly a loaf tin, it's actually not cooking it, it's lining it. I've done this off camera because I'm like, this is gonna take longer than actually making the cake itself. Line your loaf tin. Hello. Hello. All right, first things first, we've got some butter. This has been uh, in the fridge, so it's solid, but we want it kind of slightly softened uh, to help with creaming it. So it might still look like a blog. Yeah, if I just press that, that is nice and softened. Right, get some sugar. Ooh. So equal parts sugar and butter, 200 grams, and grab head whisk. Dun, 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 dun. Now here's something interesting folks have just spotted. At the back of both my cookbooks and actually most cookbooks and most some books in general, you get acknowledgements to say thank you to people that have helped you uh, along the way. So I've put like, you know, family and friends and you guys as well. Um, the really cool thing is I've got some photos for memories of, of it. You know, you've got uh, Mrs. B here, you've got Phoebe and I. There was this guy, Miles, who does the actual photography, the incredible photography in this book, but also for McDonald's. So all the posters you see in the UK, he does that. But this lady here, her name is Joanna Farrow. She did all the food styling. There were some days where I turned up to help, but obviously that's a, a massive skill. So she would have done all of this cooking. The book shoot was three weeks. I did two out of the three weeks and helped as much as I could, but Joanna was amazing. But the really cool thing, and I'm fairly certain it's her, I've got the Doctor Who cookbook to do on a future one. And look, if I move my finger out of the way, look whose name that is. Uh, uh, I think that's her. So I need to be nice about that one. I think it's pretty good anyway, but anyhow. Back to the cake. Eggs go in now. Nice. So rather than flavoring it with vanilla extract, obviously this is lime and passion fruit, this is where it starts to enhance a little bit. We get a lime, first of all. Give it a teeny bit of texture, but more importantly, some flavor. Boom. I just love that color combo anyway. It just kind of like specks it. 
Oh, it smells good. Love it. Uh, losing my flow a little bit there. For complete transparency, Chloe's been sent home from school uh, sick, so um, she's not feeling amazingly well. I've got a bit of a temperature, but hopefully later, obviously won't show it on camera, this cake will cheer up. So we're not just flavoring the sponge uh, with lime zest, and you could add a little bit of the juice if you want, but we're putting in the passion fruit. And they kind of sound like they're in packaging when you slice into it. Let's see if I can do it. it sounds like, oh, it feels like you're cutting through like cardboard. <laughs> But we need uh, two of these, and we're just gonna push uh, the flesh out. One of my favorite things is passion fruit. Uh, you can see there's a little bit of uh, juice in the bottom already, and we've got the seeds that we wanna keep till the end. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just lightly press, push that passion fruit through the sieve, to leave just the seeds as much as you can. So when I was testing this recipe, which is really weird, this is why I kind of like when I did the books, I was like, it kind of goes against what I do. I don't generally like to test recipes. I like to just do them for the first time so you can do it and be like, yeah, that's amazing. What we're trying to achieve here is uh, recreate, instead of vanilla extract, that is kind of like passion fruit extract for your, for your sponge. So uh, yeah, it's a little bit annoying. You won't get it all off. And I love the seeds, to be honest, in passion fruit. We will see them again. We're left with this passion fruit juice. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so this is kind of like a courtesy whisk. We're just gonna uh, blast this together. All right, nice. And obviously that's a little bit runny for our sponge, but the last thing that goes in is self-raising flour. And I just, <laughs> I just flicked a load that way, brilliant. It's like I was making bread or doing a really bad dad dance move. You've heard of the sprinkler. That was the flour sprinkler, folks. Coming to a nightclub near you soon. Uh, so we're just gonna fold this in. You know what, a cheeky bit of rum in there would not go amiss. I blooming love dark rum. Oh, hang on, Mrs. B's ringing me. Yeah, they had a call from school. Yeah, Chloe's here. Oh, how is she? She's all right, she's all right. So the rest of the day she's doing TV, reading books, sleeping, dad jokes, and probably eating a bit of this cake on the side. Preheating my oven to 160 fan, so we will get that into the tin. I love it when I do show my phone on camera from time to time, and people are like, oh, Mrs. B is actually Mrs. Barry in your phone. Like, yeah, that's her name, isn't it? All right, so just push it out inside there, so it's got self-raising flour, and it should rise up, folks. What I do like about this recipe, though, is it's a fairly minimal mess, which is cool. All right, so that cheeky thing goes in the oven for at least 40 minutes. I don't know why I did that. I don't know if it's just me, whenever I bake a, a loaf cake, lemon drizzle cake or whatever, I, I always find that I put the skewer in, it's not quite there. 40 minutes, and it should have nice and brown on top, but do make sure you don't want a medium rare cake. So please check it with a skewer and that's what I'll do. So it should be 40 minutes, normally is, but I'll let you know. I'm gonna spend 40 minutes being Dr. Quinn medicine woman. Ah, oh, oh, golden brown, it smells so good. I mean, it's cake. If you don't like the smell of freshly baked cake, there's something, you know. We're gonna do a couple of holes and actually these can stay here. So this is the first one, most important. Yeah, that's come out clean. And this is something I like to do with my drizzle cakes. It is optional, is I'm gonna puncture some holes in the top. Oh yeah, I completely mucked that one up. Brilliant, Barry, nice work, mate, well done. So we've kind of turned it into like a sieve cake, but what we're gonna do is make the drizzle that's not only gonna rest as this cools over it, but it's also going to soak a little bit into the sponge itself. You can seep, love that word, seep, <laughs> some flavour into the sponge. Why the heck not? Well, that's why I put it in the book anyway. I've done two extra passion fruits with an extra bit of juice on there, obviously because it's, um, well, it's not in the sponge. It's in there, remember the rest? So a bit more zest, the juice from the original lime. This is some sugar and obviously the passion fruit with the seeds still here. It's all going to come together right now. Honestly, it smells so good. I have to forget that I'm in England in September as I film this and not on a tropical island. So that is the juice of one lime in there, the zest, the sugar, but we'll bring it all together at the same time. So we will push in those seeds, which is really going to give it a funky polka dot style top on the lid of this cake. Now this is my favorite part. It's still warm and I'm aiming for those holes to just pour that glaze on. And if you look closely, you can see some of these holes are reappearing and letting that soak through the sponge as it cools, which is amazing. And now we leave it to fully cool. They say leave it to cool when you bake a cake and it is still warm right now, but I mean, does anyone ever, I love that just like a bread, freshly baked 
There's nothing better. You can optionally dust it with icing sugar as I put in the book. I don't know if I'm gonna do that or not today. I'm just gonna leave it and uh, I'll see you in a minute. Oh, oh beautiful. You see how the sugar has kind of nestled and bonded the seeds to the top of the cake? Oh. Here we go, a nice wedge out of this. Oh, come on, give me that nice light golden colour. Oh, oh, you beauty. Yeah, baby. I'm blooming proud of this and any excuse to make it again, so uh, I'm gonna taste it right now. Ah, oh. boom. Oh, it's still warm. Oh, mmm. The crunch of the seeds. Mmm. Oh my goodness. What an amazing recipe. <laughs> Can I say that? Honestly, it is so surreal for me to be making. Uh, maybe I'll do another one actually. This is so. I'm, literally, every recipe in all these books, I'm so, so proud of. I put my blood, sweat, and tears into testing, testing recipes. It sounds quite fun. It's actually quite mundane. Some people will probably love it. I, I really didn't like it. But when I taste it, I'm like, yes. Tropical tangy, slightly sweet, soft, delicate sponge to running through it, little columns of that lime and passion fruit syrup and the crunch of the seeds on top. A very delicate crunch too from the sugar that sort of sat there with it. So, so good. I didn't dust it with icing sugar. You can do that, but I mean, oh my, it doesn't need it. It doesn't need it, it's optional. Oh, but there we go. That is one of my favorite recipes. Actually my favorite savory one is the crab ravioli. So if you wanna get either of the books, uh, they're on Amazon and if you'd like to uh, get one or if you've got it, please leave a nice review, that might be good. Um, is that me selling myself? I don't know, but honestly, um, I'm gonna put the recipe up in full on my website. Just so good. Mix it up, play around with the flavor combos if you wish. And in a weird way, I get often asked about this, is like, do you ever sort of stop and think what you do for work in a way? And I do have to pinch myself, but it does feel like every day has rolled into one. It's only that I look back at something tangible like that, that it makes me realize like how far we've come. And then that is an actual massive memory on this journey. So I'm not gonna get emotional, but just thank you for being a part of this and um, just try it. Cake is good, cake is life. Let me know how you get on and I'll see you later. Do you remember when I tested that recipe years ago? I do. I remember lots of recipes that you <laughs> tested years ago. That's really good. I'm not gonna lie, that passion fruit crunch on top is a bit weird. <laughs> you have quite a few seeds or something. Mm. Yeah, but that's really nice. I really like that. It's really tangy. I think when you made it before, I did um, maybe push some of the <laughs> seeds off. You don't like seeds on passion fruit? No. Just not that many. I didn't really eat passion fruit, unless mm. it's Gin <laughs> What's your favourite recipe from uh, my books? The scones. Oh, the rhubarb. And the lemon and rhubarb scones. Yeah. The lamb meatballs. Yes. That's good. Mm, I got loads. I like that book. <laughs> I can think of the Cajun fish tacos, the fishy in a dishy. Dish fish in a dishy, yes. And right. Gert Lush chicken pie. Mm. Bye, <laughs> Mrs. B. Uh, this is my. Boston. I'd like to thank the patron that gave me this dog toy. He absolutely loves it. <laughs>